Whereas the First Amendment states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or promoting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right to peace, peaceably assemble and to petition government for redress of grievances. And whereas the city of Kissimmee honors the First Amendment and its importance when welcoming visitors and representing a diverse community to ensure that all who desire to move here for the betterment of the lives of their families may do so feeling welcome and accepted regardless of their religion and or worldview. Whereas the American Civil Liberties Union of Florida and its Central Florida chapter work to defend and preserve the individual rights and liberties guaranteed to all people in this country by the Constitution and the laws of the United States. And whereas the city of Kissimmee honors the important work that the Freedom From Religion Foundation and the Central Florida Free Thought community do in defending the constitutional principles of separation between state and church. And whereas the city of Kissimmee applauds the work of all three of these organizations in defending the Constitution's promise of freedom and liberty for everyone in our country. Now, therefore, the city commission of the city of Kissimmee hereby proclaims September 4, 2018 is the day the city honors the First Amendment of the United States Constitution in the city of Kissimmee, state of Florida, and our noble nation for the good of all. As you guys speak, uh, please uh, state your name. And you have three minutes. Uh, pardon me? Yeah, three minutes, sir. Fifteen. 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 Thank you. Uh, and I will state my name. Yes. We establish no religion in this country. We command no worship. We mandate no belief, nor must we ever. Church and state are and must remain separate. Ronald Reagan, hero to modern conservatives, said these words. John F. Kennedy, a staunch Catholic and our first Catholic president, said something similar when he spoke to a group of ministers. He said, I believe in an America where the separation of church and state is absolute. And I want to take a few minutes to talk about these concepts. My name is David Williamson, and I'm one of the founders and directors of the Central Florida Free Thought community. We have two main purposes, to preserve the separation between state and church and building a community for the tens of thousands of non-religious people in Central Florida, including many right here in Kissimmee and Osceola County. My colleague Jackie Aziz is going to discuss the law, but I wanted to talk about the ideas that underpin the law. The truly American principles and values that you, as elected officials who represent we the people, must strive to uphold when acting as elected officials. These principles are critical to the function of government, but also to ensuring religious freedom. These are, in fact, our first freedoms, the first and second clauses of the First Amendment. Our sole founding document, the US Constitution, is godless. There are no appeals to heaven or deities. The document mentions religion three times, and these serve to exclude religion from the government's purview. At the same time, that hallowed document guarantees every citizen in this great country the right to believe as they see fit and to worship in their chosen manner, so long as that practice doesn't violate the rights of others. But there's more to it than this. The two things I want to focus on are, firstly, the rights of citizens to worship, and second, the prohibition on our government promoting, endorsing, or organizing religion. The second point is the most important, and it has impact on the first as well. Our Constitution guarantees a secular government. In fact, the rights of citizens to worship and believe as they see fit does not exist without that secular government. There can be no freedom of religion without a government that is free from religion. This is critical. Every time the government and government officials take a stance on religion in any way, they are repressing religious liberty. But government officials are still people entitled to the same rights as all Americans. Of course, this is the case. Of course, government officials, city staff, and volunteers that serve the city all are free to attend church, synagogue, or mosque, to pray, and even ask friends and family to pray and fast in accordance with their religious beliefs. But 
when you do these things, you must do so as private citizens. In your personal capacities, you can freely exercise your religion as you see fit. In your official capacities, as an officer of the government, you are bound by the Constitution and cannot abuse that position to promote personal religious choices or even those organizations who ask you to do so on their behalf. As Mayor Alvarez or Commissioner Gonzalez, you are our government. But when you're acting as Mr. Alvarez or Ms. Gonzalez, you are a citizen free to exercise your religion. My colleague will do a better job of outlining, outlining the law, but whenever you're in doubt, the one question you should ask yourself is this. Am I acting as a commissioner of the city of Kissimmee, or am I acting as a private citizen? It cannot be both. If you receive an invitation because you are a public official, you're acting as a public official. If you're using the power of your office, you're acting as a public official. If you're using your government email, automobile, or telephone, or other resource, you're acting as a public official. If you're using your government title, you're acting as a public official. And remember, always remember, freedom of religion can never truly exist unless our government is free from religion. The best guarantee of religious freedom for one and all is a secular government. I thank you, and I'll be happy to answer any questions now, or we can do so at the end of the presentation today. Now I'll introduce Mary Jane Cooper, president of the American Civil Liberties Union of Central Florida. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Uh, as counselors, you represent a diverse population here in Kissimmee that consists of not only Christians, but also atheists, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, and many others that are unnamed. Promoting this event and inviting citizens to participate in religious rituals such as prayer in your official capacities promotes this church and its religious views. When you promote such an event and practice, you are excluding the nearly 30% of US American adults and the 30% of Floridians who are non-Christian. This message all alienates both non-Christians and non-believers in Kissimmee and the surrounding areas by turning them into political outsiders in their own community. Of course, you are free to attend church, pray, and even ask your friends and family to pray and fast in accordance with your own personal religious beliefs. However, when you do these things, you must do so only as private citizens. In your personal capacities, you can freely exercise your religion as you see fit. In your official capacities, as an officer of the government, you're bound by the Establishment Clause. You cannot abuse that office to promote your personal religious choices or even that of organizations who ask you to do so on their own behalf. The Supreme Court has said time and again that the First Amendment mandates governmental neutrality between religion and non-religion, and between religion and religion. The government must remain neutral toward religion because the preservation and transmission of religious beliefs and worship is a responsibility and a choice committed to the private sphere. Promoting your personal religion using a government title and position gives the unfortunate impression that the city supports and endorses that organization and religion, its message, and its teachings as well. The government is sending a message to non-adherents that they are outsiders and not full members of the political community, and an accompanying message to adherents that they are insiders and favored members. This presents a problem for the city because the Establishment Clause specifically prohibits the government from promoting or affiliating itself with any religious doctrine or organization. We just want to make sure that here, the ACLU of Central Florida serving Osceola County, Orange County, Lake, and Seminole is here to advise and help in the event, and we're really happy that we were able to work with the city of Kissimmee in gaining a better understanding. I have here Jason Mizell who is a member of this community who would like to speak. Good evening, thank you. Yes, as stated, my name is Jason Mizell and I reside in Eastern Osceola County. Yes, I have um, um, seen the signs that were referenced in the documentation um, as I often come in and drive around areas of Kissimmee and the general area. I recall being initially confused as to what it was but when I realized the text was religious-based, 
Out of habit, I turned away and ignored it. As these types of displays, most exemplified by churches and retailers and the need of people to include religious messaging in speeches and presentations, have become far too common out in public these days, including those made by even several of our candidates during our recent primaries. Later on, it dawned on me that it originally, in its original form, appeared to be sponsored and funded by an actual municipality, perhaps even the city, city of Kissimmee itself. And this just made me shake my head even more, even more than I usually do. See, in my life, the effort and seeming need of my elected officials to promote religion has quite the opposite effect. Religion has no place, never has in my life. And I'm appalled at the personal indulgence taken and the assumptions made that being in elective office means never taking, much less sponsoring, any one side when it comes to the topic of religion, as much as I have to already endure from other public displays in the, out in the community. Here, in its original form, the city appears to have not just agreed to promote the event, but is actually asking its citizens to engage in religious worship. A further concern was, would there be more in the future? And how far would it go? It's one thing to sponsor or underwrite uh, a type of, say, for instance, quote unquote, Latin festival, or something such as that, one that focuses on a specific group, for instance, as a celebration of culture and diversity, and to connect residents together. This is usually an enjoyable event for all people. But this was clearly not such an event. Regardless of what actually happened, or even what was intended, this had the appearance of wholesale sponsorship with, a, with publicly funding of religious activity. The topic of religion should always be a personal matter. And this has nothing whatsoever to do with a public entity, a city government, or as part of any promotion by any public official. As I had said, don't we have enough out in public to have to endure? Originally, I'm sure the city had good intentions, but more consideration should have been taken in presentation of this idea. And perhaps this can act as an example for future instances. I am, I am glad to be part of this conversation today where groups of concerned residents and citizens have spoken up and said it's about time we stopped ignoring and shaking our heads at government promotion, sponsorship of religion, and made our voices known. We must continue reminding people of our right to a fully secular government, free from any religious influence, not just this one, but all government entities throughout our entire society. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jacqueline Azos, and I'm a staff attorney with the ACLU of Florida. I'm here to talk about the First Amendment to the US Constitution, which you have honored here today, and then we thank you for that. The first part of the First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. This is called the Establishment Clause, which has been incorporated to municipal governments, such as the city of Kissimmee, via the 14th Amendment Due Process Clause, which says, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Thomas Jefferson described this as a wall of separation between church and state. In Everson v. Board, of Edwards of Ewing, the Supreme Court said the Establishment Clause means state and federal governments cannot pass laws or act in ways that aid one religion, aid all religions, or prefer one religion, run religion over another. In Epperson v. Arkansas, the Supreme Court of the United States said the First Amendment mandates governmental neutrality between religion and religion, and between religion and non-religion. The Supreme Court has established a three-part test as set forth in Lemon v. Kurtzman. The, th the three-part test considers, first, is there a secular purpose of the government action? And it has to be the actual purpose must be secular. It can't be a sham or a fictitious purpose. Secondly, is the government action, is the primary effect of that action something that neither advances nor inhibits religion? And the third consideration is that there can be no excessive entanglement between state and church. Some examples would be delegating power to a religious entity or issuing a prayer proclamation. The 11th Circuit, which 
controls Florida and is one step below the Supreme Court explained in Jaffrey v. Wallace that prayer is the quintessential religious practice, which implies that no secular purpose can be satisfied. The primary effect of prayer is the advancement of one's religious beliefs. It acknowledges the existence of a supreme being, and the involvement of a school, in this case, in such activity involves the state in advancing the affairs of religion. The Supreme Court and this circuit have indicated such prayer activities cannot be advanced without the implication that the state is violating the Establishment Clause. Other cases of note on the Establishment Clause include Lee v. Wiseman, another Supreme Court case, finding that prayer at high school graduation, even a non-denominational prayer, is unconstitutional. Santa Fe Independent School District v. Doe found that student-led prayers before a school football game was unconstitutional. And one more, a little closer to home, Art Rojas v. City of Ocala, Florida, a 2018 case, found it unconstitutional when the government of Ocala organized and sponsored a prayer vigil. Newman v. City of East Point was a case from the Northern District of Georgia. There, the court stopped a city and its mayor from holding a prayer breakfast, which the city and its mayor in official capacity had organized, endorsed, and promoted. The ACLU of Florida is a civil rights organization, and we're dedicated to many causes, such as voting rights, racial justice, criminal justice, LGBT rights, immigration rights, privacy, and of course, the First Amendment, which includes the Establishment Clause. On behalf of the ACLU of Florida, I want to thank you for your continued commitment to civil rights and civil liberties and the First Amendment. We're available for questions if you have thank any you for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have no questions. Thank you Thank so you much. very much.